Sites like Mr. Price, those are e-commerce stores that are built out of traditional retail brands. And those have got the benefits of brand credibility, of supply chain. The next would be uh, sites like Kalahari who are built within big corporates. And so they have the advantages of uh, very deep pockets and long-term outlooks. And, and they have been around for a long time. They're probably some of the more ones we know about better. And then thirdly you have uh, sites like Zandos. And these are the companies that start with a whole lot of money and they can launch with a huge bang and on day three they have 200 employees and I, I take my hat off to them. And so those are the first three. This, this is the fourth type of e-commerce and uh, that's me in my lounge. Uh, not now, that was uh, about 2006. And uh, these are the people who start e-commerce with no money and with no big brand and with no supply chain and with no marketing and with no hype. Uh, but they're willing to work for nothing. And, uh, and they're pretty passionate about what they do. And, and this is the story that I'm going to tell. I'm going to tell Yappy Chef's story from a lounge to where, where we are now. And it's not to say that we're better or worse than any of the other types of e-commerce, but we are different. And I hope that uh, I can inspire and encourage other people who are also filling their lounges at the moment and wanting to step out. So this is Yappy Chef. Um, that is the site we sell kitchen tools, for those who don't know, and some food items. So how did we start? Um, we were in web development, so we were selling our time by the hour. And everyone who's in that industry dreams of being able to uh, not sell their time by the hour, to be able to uh, be on the beach and to do one hour's of work. You're willing to do it for free if you're going to benefit for, from it for you know the next couple of years. And that's the dream. But no one ever does it. So at the time there were four of us working, this is in 2005, uh, and another friend John, and uh, Shane is taking the photo. So the four of us who were working together at that time decided, well, we want to not sell our time by the hour. Uh, we want to launch a product. And so the four of us had to go away and come up with something that we were going to sell online, and then, uh, and then come and build a website. And, and we came together for the Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and we each came with a product. And on the Thursday morning, we voted for which product it was going to be, and then we built the site. And we built it, we designed it, came up with a name, uh, we found some couriers, we hooked up some payment method, and the site that we launched uh, was Bugzapper. Has anyone seen the Bugzapper? That's exactly what we intended it to be. We wake up, well, actually, we only sold one on the Saturday, and that was to my mom, because we forgot about marketing. And uh, 2005, marketing online was, was pretty tricky, particularly with no budget. But it slowly got off the ground, and it became exactly what we wanted it to be. It was, uh, it, it was we could build something on the site that you could go away, and you could come back the next day, and you could make some sales. And you put them in the box, and you ship them out. So we were on this journey of, Ooh, we've got the e-commerce bike and we're going to start lots of sites because we know how to do it now. And, and then we came across the idea for Yappy Chef. And Yappy Chef was in 2006 and, and Shane went away and he came up with, um, with the concept of selling kitchen tools online. And, and when we started getting to Yappy Chef, we realized we actually don't want to start lots of these sites. We want to start one and, and do it properly and really build a brand. And, and there's a great story about the name Yappy Chef the brand because Yappy Chef the was already really taken by someone else at the time. But Shane was so convinced that this is the name that it has to be, uh, that we emailed the guy who owned the domain and said, you know, do you want to sell it to us? Uh, and we didn't have a response, so it was a bit disappointing. And then about a month later, we were on the site, we were looking up some domains for a client, and Shane talked to the ownership to come and they let it expire, and we bought it for $9. So that is the, the story of our name, and then we knew it was right. And, and this was the first design, well, the oldest design that we have in record, it didn't go live, but that was just a spill of it. You can see the logo and the name are pretty much what they are today. So this was in 2006, we were building it. And we launched in August 2006. And this was our very first sale. It's one based in Rush and a peeler. And that was to Shane's dad. So the, the legacy continued. This is all of the sales in 2006. And there are 11 of them. Actually, hang on, 8 of them. I, I got it wrong. There are none in December because there were no sales in December 2006. And out of that list of 8 sales, only one of them was to someone we didn't know. You know, not family member or friend, uh, or friend of a family member. And, and so it was about as slow a start as you can possibly have in business. We were not, uh, certainly not making any money of this. Uh, we were still doing our, our day jobs, which were building websites for people, and we were slowly getting this off the ground. We launched with no credit card facilities, you can only pay with an EFT, 
and, and we would uh, walk up the road to the stationery store at the end of the road and you know, buy the packing tape and the handwritten card camera and, and silver envelope at that time and walk back down and pack the one box. And at the time, um, this was sort of 2006, 2007, so very slow, and in 2000, end of 2000, beginning of 2008, my second son was, um, was new. And uh, we would pack the boxes, uh, uh, we would pack the boxes in, the, in a room that was just opposite where he slept. And this is a, a chat we have, so it's very small, so I have to read to you. Mike was our one employee at the time, he said, this is 2.38 p.m., is it fine to use the tape now? So this is those packing tapes, you know, that you... Uh, can I make 2.30 or sort of general rule? And this is because my son used to sleep in the afternoon. He would have a sleep between kind of 1 and 3. And the packing tape made too much noise. So in terms of cottage industry, kind of working from home, it's about as garage as you can get. It's about as, uh, as kind of home industry as, as you can get. This is Shane packing a box. You can see the bugs out there actually in the bottom left of this picture because we're running both businesses at the same time. And Shane was cutting down that box because we didn't want to ship too much air because it kind of cost money to ship it. So you've got to make a big, the box as small as you can to put the products in. We stamp the side. We put it in a box, and we would uh, we would we built the systems as we went along. So at that time, we would you know one order a month or one order a week, or you can remember it in your head. And you email the supplier and say, "Please send me one of these things," and they send it to you, and you put it in the box. And Shane went away for weeks. So I was in charge of packing the boxes, and there were like three orders at one time. And I thought, "How how are we going to cope?" So I printed out each of the orders, and I put I put a piece of paper on the desk, and three bits of paper. And then as the stock came from the supplier, I put the stock on top of a bit of paper, and then when everything was right, I thought, hang on, this is going to change. So we built the first bit of the kind of ordering system, and the orders went green when they could ship it. And that's how we've evolved over time. This is one of the very first boxes, and that on top is a silver envelope, um, which is the handwritten cards. We, we write handwritten cards to this day, which I'll come back to in a moment. And we try and make the packaging and the experience something nice. We had a lot of time, obviously, so that now we can pack each order. <laughs> In 2008, we moved um, to an office in Westlake Business Park, which is in Cape Town, southern suburbs. And at that stage, Paul, who's actually in the back, and Shane and myself, and Sarah was in customer service, and Mike was in logistics. We didn't have five boxes on that day, so that's why he's holding five. Um, but this we're very proud of, of, uh, of our team at that stage, 2008. This was the stock room. That was the stock. I really enjoyed this picture because the fact that it exists, I look back now and I think, why did I take a picture of those boxes? It could only be because we were like, wow, one, two, three, four, five, seven boxes. Uh, we also used to hand write the labels on the boxes until the courier guys could no longer read the writing of Mike, who wasn't very good at writing, and so they had to print the labels. Uh, so that, that's our story, and, and it's a story of, of great passion and, and desire to produce um, excellent experiences because we had nothing else. John Cherry, who some of you might know, um, he was consulting, <laughs> big word, he was helping us at the time with our marketing. And he said, well, if you don't have any money, your best form of marketing is word of mouth. So just delight your customers and they'll tell us about the customers. And we said, John, how many other customers can one customer tell? Like, we've only ever had one customer, you know? That's going to take forever. But it was built into who we are from the beginning, was about delighting customers. And uh, this is our Peter page, which unfortunately you can't see. We have, uh, 270 smiley faces and two unhappy faces and those unhappy faces kill us and we've done everything we can to try and turn those two unhappy people into happy people uh, we know them by name and that fortunately they drop off over after a year and I don't say that to post, I don't say that to, to kind of you know make it sound like we're doing anything spectacularly good uh, but it's something that we focus very hard on um, as a point of reference and this is mostly because it's very funny this is Hello Peter's page on Hello Peter and they have 172 smileys and 171 unhappy faces. Uh, and most brands are kind of, if they go 50-50, they're, they're doing quite well. And, and it, it's, I mean, there's lots of measures of, of how customers are doing. This is one of the more public ones. And it, it kind of it defines who we are, it defines how we started the business. And pretty much the only thing we can do to differentiate ourselves from everyone else who's got bigger budgets, more money, you know, better supply chains, is that, is that we can care, and that's something which is difficult for. No one can really replicate caring with money. You can only replicate caring if it starts, if it's built into the, the DNA of the business. I run through a few of our proud moments, and I'm proud of them, not because necessarily they were spectacular, but because if you remember where we came from, um, they, they kind of take on a, a bigger meaning. 
this was when we helped Disney launch Tangled, the movie Tangled, the, the Rapunzel movie in South Africa. So because there was a frying pan in the movie, they thought we would be useful people to help them promote it. And uh, we, we filled up theatres around the country and people bought their old frying pans and then someone could win a new frying pan. And it was just great that Disney, you know, Disney, like the people from America would want to work with, with us, Yappy Chef, to, to launch a movie. So that was great. This was, um, everyone bought a mini during last year, like Mini the car, would get a gift from us. And what was great about this was that Mini um, wanted to send a Yappy Chef product and a Yappy Chef voucher as a gift. And it was just a great brand association that they would want to be associated with us. And we were a gift that was, was worth giving. Um, this is quite funny, the Woolies in the room, I'm sure a lot of you know the Woolies Lovebirds moment and, uh, and us hijacking their, their domain. Um, and, and what resulted from that was raising 100,000 rand for Soil for Life, the charity that we support, and winning a gold lorry, which is it's apparently it's a big deal. We're not an agency, so we, we kind of were a little bit um, in the dark about how big a deal it really is. But those are some great moments for us, and, and there's lots more. But it's really, we are we're proud of, of kind of the journey that we've come from over the, over the, over the years. Uh, this is us today. We, we operate from Westlake Business Park. We've got a, an office in a warehouse. Uh, we've got a whole lot more boxes than we used to have. Uh, <laughs> we, we ship up more than that. We've got, a, we've got real stock in the shelves, lots of shelves. Uh, we had to stock take this last weekend and there was a lot to count. We still ship the boxes in the way that we, um, the way that we did. We still uh, handwrite cards with people that we employ full time to do that and part time and we chip in when there's too much volume. Uh, and we take great pride in that experience. The only experience you have with the other chef uh, is the box that arrives and, and probably the delivery guy. So we're going to make that as personal and as human as possible. We have a warehouse uh, with, with conveyor belts. That was a great day when we got our first conveyor belts. Some kind of big and grown up. A uh, forklift and the conveyor belts are the two things that make you feel like a like a real man. Uh, we've, we've launched uh, our first Yappy Chef branded product, so it's a letter press cookie set. So it's kind of a, a cookie cutter, but you can put letters in it and you can make a name on them. So this is, it's, it's a Yappy Chef product, and it's kind of no one else's brand, it's our brand. Um, and so those are the very first baby steps in that direction. This is our team, uh, we've got about 55 people, and uh, uh, we do everything from one place, we're all in one big building, and we believe that and we're going to continue that for as long as we can so that the people packing the boxes are right next door to the people who are helping customers and the people who are writing the content. So we feel that helps with our culture and our vibe. Uh, this is a little bit more stats. We've got 5,000 tools, we're six years old, and we're hiring particularly the database.